And today is the last day to get money for your bump stocks. Washington State Patrol is holding its last buyback event that's going on today. Attorney Michael Avenatti was hit with federal charges today on both the East and West Coasts. Prosecutors say he tried to extort from a company in the Pacific Northwest. Several coaches and administrators accused of participating in a college admission scam are heading to court today. Now, if convicted, we are learning just how much time they could spend in prison. Hi everyone, thank you for being with us on Crem2 News at Noon. I'm Laura Papetti. And I'm Jen York. Well, we are starting the work week with some drizzle. Let's take a live look outside here at the noon hour. Depending on where you're at, you might see a little sunshine. It's in passing, right? Yep. Beautiful it, look over yeah. downtown Spokane, the park. Finally seeing some green grass instead of snow. I know it's gr there are. I can't believe there's so much green. My yard looks just <laughs> horrific. Mine's just brown. <laughs> brown. Yeah. Well, Evan Arani is in the weather center today tracking everything we need to know. Good morning, guys. Yeah, we are good afternoon. I should say uh, we are finally uh, at that point where those drizzles from yesterday have kind of subsided completely. And now we're in the in between zone where we've got dry weather for the, about the remainder of your day. But by late tonight into tomorrow, we've got another round of uh, those drizzly rain showers on the way. So here's satellite radar right now. You can see completely dry around the northwest. A good amount of cloud cover, though, a lot thicker of clouds than uh, we had seen for most of the morning hours. So clouds are thickening as the day continues. And what that means is that by the time we get to about 9 o'clock, we're looking at a solid chance for a couple drizzles uh, here and there. Now, they're not going to be anything crazy. We know uh, what those were like as yesterday brought plenty of uh, just those very light rain showers. Uh, but that could happen through the overnight hours into tomorrow morning. But an afternoon high temperature is expected today of about 59 degrees. That'll be seven degrees above average for uh, the day. And uh, you can see on Future Tracker how that low pressure system kind of pushes farther inland. So it makes its way over to the west coast of the state by the time we reach uh, your evening, passes over the Cascades into the late evening and uh, uh, really your overnight hours. And then by the time we get just around uh, 11 p.m. to 5 a.m., we see those showers pass through eastern Washington and the north Idaho panhandle. Now it's not going to be anything to impact the morning commute for your Tuesday as uh, those are going to pretty much be completely cleared out by your Tuesday morning, uh, but uh, could leave those roads just a little wet as you wake up on your Tuesday. We'll be talking about a little bit more wet weather on the way that includes on, on this upcoming Thursday uh, in just a bit. I'll send things back to you guys. All right, Evan, thank you. A wounded Kittitas police officer is out of the hospital today and recovering at home. Officer Benito Chavez was shot in the line of duty last week. Kittitas County Sheriff's Deputy Ryan Thompson was also shot and later died from his injuries. Police officers from Seattle and Bellevue escorted Chavez as he left the hospital. He and his wife say they are so grateful for all the community support that they've gotten. Well, leg hurts. It's going to be a long recovery, things like that. So, but I'm good, and I'm and I'm really glad to, you know, have have these departments and these people in my corner. We just want to say thank you for everyone that has supported us, and we're we couldn't be more grateful for everyone that has um, done everything. And so, thank you. Well, as you heard, Officer Chavez has a lengthy rehab ahead of him. He talked a little bit about that as he was leaving the hospital. But for now, he says it is so nice to be able to leave and go home. Meanwhile, a memorial service for Deputy Ryan Thompson is set for Thursday at 2 p.m. It will be at Nicholson Pavilion. That is on the campus of Central Washington University in Ellensburg. Deputy Thompson graduated from that school in 2003. Well, today is the last day to get money for bump stocks. It's all part of the Washington State Patrol buyback program. The devices will be illegal at the federal level beginning tomorrow, and the state law is set to ban them coming up in July. Bump stocks can be modified to make semi-automatic weapons function like fully automatic ones. The ban includes homemade devices as well. WSP <coughs> leaders say they are not handing out vouchers for any homemade devices, only manufactured ones. To get a voucher, you can take your bump stock to the WSP district office. That is, of course, near Spokane International Airport. You will need a Washington State ID. You should receive a check in the mail for $150. Now, there is a limit of five vouchers per person, and each district office is only handing out 125 of them. Well, the buyback event runs until 4 this afternoon at the address listed on your screen. And we do want to remind you again that today is the last day to do this. You can find more information right now on creme.com. 
New at noon, law enforcement officers arrested attorney Michael Avenatti today on federal charges in two separate cases in California and New York. The U.S. attorney in Los Angeles says he is facing charges of bank and wire fraud in California, also accused of embezzling money from a client and defrauding a bank through fake tax returns. Prosecutors say he negotiated a $1.6 million settlement for a client, but they say he told the client he would receive the money two months later than when it actually came in. In that time frame, they say Avenatti used the money to pay his coffee business expenses and for personal use as well. And then prosecutors in New York announced separate charges for allegedly trying to extort Nike for $20 million. CBS News reports he threatened to release damaging information about the company if Nike did not pay him and his client. According to the complaint filed in federal court, Avenatti agreed not to hold a press conference if his client received $1.5 million. The complaint also states Avenatti asked Nike to retain his client to help conduct an internal investigation. And for that, he wanted his client to be paid an additional sum between 15 and $25 million. Authorities in both states plan to hold press conferences this afternoon. So Michael Avenatti tweeted this just hours before the charges were announced. Quote, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern, we will be holding a press conference to disclose a major high school and college basketball scandal perpetrated by Nike. He alleges the criminal conduct reached the highest level of Nike and involves big, name in college, big names in college basketball. Now, it is unclear if this tweet is related to the criminal complaint filed today in court. This is, of course, a developing story, and to read more about this case, all you need to do is visit creme.com, and, of course, you can find that information on the Creme 2 mobile app as well. It is coming up on 1207 right now. Attorney General William Barr released a letter summarizing the findings of Special Counsel Robert Mueller's investigation. Now, the full report is not public, but the letter cites the overall conclusion from the two-year investigation. We had our verified team break down what it says. Important to note before we go any further, Mueller's report has not been publicly released. What we're talking about now is a letter. This letter, four pages written by Attorney General William Barr summing up Mueller's report. It breaks the conclusions into two parts. First, Russian interference in the 2016 election. Now, according to the letter, Mueller's report found no evidence the Trump campaign coordinated with Russian groups to influence the election. It did find two separate Russian attempts to sway the election, one to spread falsehoods on social media, another to hack into computers and gather political information. The second part of the letter is on obstruction of justice. Basically, Barr says the Mueller team, after gathering evidence, decided not to make any judgments. They didn't find that Trump committed a crime, but they did exonerate him either. That left the decision to Attorney General Barr and Deputy AG Rod Rosenstein. They did not find sufficient evidence the president had obstructed justice. Put simply, the Mueller report cleared Trump and his team of any involvement with Russian efforts to influence the election. And Attorney General Barr said he won't charge the president with obstruction of justice. There's some debate online over the definition of exonerated, but what's clear from the letter is that Trump won't be charged with conspiracy or obstruction. Remember though, everything is currently coming from Barr's letter. While there are some quotes in it, this is not the special counsel's full report. Barr says he's working to legally release more, but no one currently knows what evidence led to Mueller's conclusions. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. All right, 2020 presidential candidates are joining the, de the demand to make the Mueller report public. More than one dozen Democrats in the race say the public deserves to read it. And that includes Washington Governor Jay Inslee. President Trump and his allies are pointing to several Democrats who have claimed there was collusion with Russia. All right, the first wave of defendants in the college admission scandal will face a judge today. That's going on in Boston. The group includes college administrators, 12 coaches, and those involved in overseeing false tests. They allegedly accepted bribes and falsified applicants' athletic profiles to ensure students were admitted to elite schools. Now, if convicted, they could face up to 20 years in prison. Actresses Felicity Huffman and Lori Loughlin also were both named in the scandal. They are set to appear in federal court coming up sometime next month. All right, a lot going on. <laughs> a lot of big news. Today. That's right. Well, a new season brings a new CEO for Visit Spokane. We are learning more about her future plans for the city and what drew her to the Inland Northwest.